Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today and what I'm going to be doing today is adding the final block which is three fish, I know the blue one you can hardly see is a fish that's the right way around um, three fish to row number six of this quilt so I've done last week I was doing the nose of the shark sharks now finished and those three blocks that cover the shark and the side of the cliff they've been sewn in I just added this one this morning I, I actually made that block last week or the week before same with this block so I'll show how how I add them in the title of the video is last last row which this row row number six actually isn't the last row I have to do and before I start sewing so before I make too big a I won't say statement but too big a mess to be able to get myself out of easily the last row I have to do is actually row seven now here is the cliff the two blocks out of the cliff of row seven they've been there for months yesterday I finished this one it's just seaweed and the rest of the cliff that one fits in to that spot with the lines for the seaweed lining up this block or this row of blocks which is row seven not only has to line up with row six it also has to line up with row eight which is actually done so row seven doesn't sound very logical but row seven is the last row now I've done two blocks and they're sewn in so each row has 13 blocks there's 10 rows high 13 rows wide um, so that's block 12 and 13 done I've actually done blocks 1 and 2 which it's going to be a bit too awkward to drag the whole lot over and show you them so you can wait for the next update to see those and I would think by the time I do the next quilt update right, as opposed to a sew and chat or a something like this is the quilt will actually be done so I've got this one to add in which I'll probably won't add in till tomorrow because I've already had enough of adding in for today it is quite a, a tedious process and it takes a lot longer than you think it does I've been listening to music and it takes a whole album and I'm talking a greatest hits album of whatever which tends to be 18 to 22 songs but it takes an entire album to add in a block and then take all the papers out this block will take longer than that because it's not just up one side and across I've then got to come down this final this final part now when it comes to adding blocks my tip is to doesn't matter if you add them from the left hand side or the right hand side of the quilt keeping in mind it's all back to front this one's actually upside down as well is always start on the right hand side of the block that you're adding whether that's if it's the actual edge of the quilt then you don't have to do that you then can just go across the top if there's nothing else there but always start on the right hand side if you're right handed because if I let's say there was nothing that wasn't there and I was adding this block just on its own I would go across and down if I went this side up and across it's all backwards for a left-handed person that's probably the way you would do it but for a right-handed person you just you can't work that way you can go up the side that's not really an issue but it's when you're going across because going up the side for that is 
not much different than going up the side for this other than the fact that you can't bunch it up when you've got you know whatever number of blocks sewn in which means that this coming down this side will be a little bit awkward but awkward's what you know it's in the nature of quilts so this will take two and a bit lots of thread I can normally normally it takes one and a bit I can get all up upwards and then halfway across with one length of thread then it's just this last little bit I'm going to assume this is going to take two to three lots of thread but that's where it's going I've got the seaweed lined up even though I don't have many of these green leaf bits by putting those there and then going on to the other green it links it in same with that just that one there it links it in same with this yellow or gold or it's more a mustardy sort of color maybe and then it goes into that bright yellow which I'm about to run out of so my bright yellow then gets replaced with a not quite so bright yellow but it's still very nice so that's my new all the seaweeds for the remainder of the the quilt so I'll finish this one I'll do this one I will add in that probably tomorrow as I said and that just leaves with those three done and the two at the beginning that's five blocks out of row seven done I've only got eight more blocks to make and then sew in and then I've got the monstrous job and I'll show you it's it's actually that lot there that's the right way around is actually rows 8, 9, 10. That's the sky and coming down into the first row of the sea. And I've got this out and sort of just sitting there because, as I said, I have to match, not just match the seaweed, but make sure I don't have too many of the same colours together. So that's why I've got that sitting there, but that's going to be... That's 130 hexagons across. That's a lot of that's a lot of hexagons to or you know, a big row to add together. So I'll just move that off the it's partly on the um mat, partly not. So as far as colours going together, I hadn't planned on having an orange fish in a block that's diagonal to an orange seahorse which is that one there but they're different this one's got like a pattern in it and it's the same as that yellow and I've got I think purple that's got the same you know the same design which is just chevrons really so although they're too orange they're not the same um, the same shade and back here I've got a green fish now that green fish is the same color green I'm now using for the seaweed so when I come to do any seaweed here I will have to make sure and that's right I can change the green color because if we come back we've then got the um, uh, what octopus and I can probably do a, a totally different shade of green for the seaweed on those few blocks but we'll see I'll worry about that when I get to it some blocks don't have any seaweed at all and some have got lots and some are nothing but like that nothing but seaweed so when I go to start as I said I start at the right hand side I make sure it's lined up sometimes I'm adding a block that there's already two here like when I came to add the tail of the shark I didn't work my way across I started with the tail and the edge of the cliff so I had this next row's edge of the cliff there 
and I had to make sure that I positioned the block in the right spot so I knew exactly where to start. I didn't want to be sewing up there and then find I'm a block, I'm a hexagon out. So always make sure everything's lined up. This here I know is, there's only one place this can go. I can't, although the fish don't look too different, I can't do the fish upside down because of the one corner of the hexagons, well the block is up, one's down, it can only fit one way. And that's this way. The only other tricky bit I have when doing starting a block is I line the first two hexagons up and I'm not sewing this edge, I'm sewing across the top there and I need to make sure it doesn't slip which I've had it do and then you have to line it up again. Once you've got the first one started and you know that this is a shorter thread than normal because I've had to do a few repairs but once you know it's in the right spot I always once I've done this first little row I always then lay it down flat and just make sure I'm in the right spot you know I don't mind having to redo one seam I don't want to have to redo the entire side of a block because I've got it in the wrong position. You find out soon enough if it's wrong. And yes, I have done it wrong in the past. Not often, but enough to know to check before I get any further than that. And I look at this and I don't have to worry about that side for now. But yep, that fits, that lines up. I've got the staggering of the bottom. So now I can just keep sewing. So I said this is the last one for row six. So that'll mean rows one to six are totally finished. Eight, nine and ten are totally finished. And so it just leaves row seven, which is the last row. And that's already started. I mean, I could work day and night and get it finished in you know, eight, eight blocks I can do in, if I had to, eight days, but it takes, you then got to allow time to add the blocks in, you know, allow time for your shoulder to recover from all these, the movement. So I'm guessing it's going, I'm going to allow two to three weeks to do those eight blocks and get them sewn in, so maybe three weeks. So I would think by the middle of May I'll have them done. It's going to take two to three days just to add the the um, rows eight, nine and ten to the rest of it because although it's you know just a straight line sewing it's a lot of sewing. I was thinking about adding them adding it as I go along with row seven but I think it's going to be easier to um, just join them together at the end but um, that may be famous last words there um, won't be a video next week I don't think because I've got an assignment due for this um, one of my law subjects, it's um, called Legal Professional Skills and it's about how, how to research and how to write and how to interview and a lot of things I'm probably never ever going to need to use because I don't plan on actually practicing law. I mean at the moment I don't even know that I'll be finishing the course but we'll, um, got an assignment, you've got to do, uh, find a couple of journal articles and review them do another like show how you research things, how you search for things and an annotated bibliography which is all I actually expected this assignment to be but this um, coordinator has added things to it. So that was due 
Sunday night next week, but because I didn't get the question out till a few days late, it's due on the Wednesday, but I'd like to get it done in time. This subject doesn't have any exams, so I have to do well on the assignment. It says the final assignment will be a research essay, which um, when I did this course last year and failed it, my first two assignments I passed and failed miserably on the on the final one so I don't want to repeat that so we shall just see how it goes but I'll leave more of I get the results for the first assignment back tomorrow so I will leave that till the next sew and chat um, I want to say thank you to everyone for all your kind words regarding my cat and yes i did have a put down it um it was hard and i had my friend come around the day before and um you know she agreed that it was time so i didn't um that made the decision a lot easier you know the decision to have it done the actual having it done wasn't easy at all but it um certainly made a difference to my um, day to day life not having it here. I get up to to go to the kitchen from my desk in the lounge room there and sort of expect to hear the thump as she jumps onto the ground to follow me in. My laundry floor no longer covered in kitty litter trays, the kitchen floor doesn't have bowls and things so you know life is a lot I'll say cleaner but and cheaper obviously but yeah you can't really put a price on on cats I definitely won't get another one you know they do tie you down they they um you know I'm looking at if I wanted to move to a unit I don't have to make sure it's got at least a little backyard for her that can be cat proofed you can just yeah not be not be restricted in where I live because of because of having a cat you know, one of the things with this house is because it's such a quiet street, you know, the cats, other than this one recently, the cats have always been able to go outside whenever they want. Not at night, obviously. Um, and there's so little, you know, one car's gone down this street in the past half an hour. You know, there's little chance of it getting run over, or any cat getting run over. So it's... um. You know, that did influence my choice. But, yeah, cat's gone. So, she's buried at my friend's back, in my friend's backyard. And, um, yeah, that's done. The, um, like I said, there won't be a video next week. There'll be one... The following week I'll do a sew and chat and I'll let you know how many of these remaining blocks I've got done and also what I got for my first assignment. I'll also go into the MRI results which I'm not going to bother to go in about now but just that it didn't show anything but there's more to it than that or well, not with the results but what the eye hospital said. Um, but that's pretty much all that's been happening. So just, you know, since last week, it's enough. But so I've just been listening to lectures, you know, attending, I'd say tutorials. There's a student called Peer Assistant Study Sessions, I think they are. They're on Zoom and for this subject that I've got to, you know, the um, legal skills one, somebody I've become friends with, she takes that, that's on a Monday night, which is actually the highlight of my week because it is quite interesting. And even if I didn't need to know what she's teaching, I'd still attend it to support her. But she's been doing a great job with the sessions, taking the sessions, it's her first time doing it. So I have that on a Monday night. There's 
lectures and tutorials on other nights so um, it, keep, it keeps me busy it also gives me something to do while I'm sewing and I've decided that I think it's on my home page well it's the picture the um, big turquoise quilt not the diamond one the other one that's got all the 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 blue version of that quilt which I'm assume it's showing my great big blue version of that design that quilt I'm going to once the weather changes for winter I'm going to put that quilt on my bed it's not cold enough now to warrant it but I always said when I've got no cats I've got a hexagon here that's come undone when I've got no cats I'll um put it on the bed same with my great big blanket my great big blanket I won't put on the bed this year I'm going to put the quilt on and in preparation for doing that I've also my big turquoise one with the with the diamonds which was I think it was the first video I ever put up was getting that ready for quilting um I've actually hung that up I took the curtains down that were there that were there before I moved in and I thought they were just you know cotton curtains they're not they're properly lined curtains and if I thought about it I would have just pushed that curtain rod back it so it was against the um raised up on the brackets for the curtain rod and I would have put my quilt in front of it but I didn't think so I have took those curtains down put my quilt up in its place and the light just streams through it you know it's not direct sunlight but it's a lot of light so I might have to go and play with that but it's nice to have it hanging up and the quilt that you know it was designed to go with will go onto the bed probably in June so that's progress not um, not sure what I'm going to do once I've finished all the blocks for this one it will get um, folded up and put away until I've got the batting and the backing fabric and the weather to um, quilt it because this room is freezing in the winter and I'm not going to put I want an electric radiator I can plug in for in here but I'm not going to waste electricity just in order to get the quilt done I will probably do some um, do some knitting in the other room I doubt I will do anything for the other quilt the second underwater quilt because I don't have anywhere to put this one let alone a second one or a third one especially not till I know what's happening with my site so I'll probably might do a little bit of miniature furniture and some knitting and obviously studying so that's the situation at the moment just thank everyone for their support as per usual and don't forget to like and subscribe and share because it all does make a difference I mean I don't think I'm ever going to get to a hundred thousand subscribers because that's going to take at this rate it's going to take 150 years because it's taking roughly 18 months per thousand I know it'll get to a point if it keeps going that it'll it won't increase exponentially but it's still I would think by June I should be at 2,000 well I got to 1,000 in February like 1st of February last year so so probably 16 months took 18 months for the first thousand 16 months for the second thousand yeah it's not you know it's not going viral it's not going stupid and the money's going backwards not up you know increasing which is you know not what i want or expect but it is what it is yeah at the end of the day it's I won't say free money but it but it actually is the videos don't cost me anything to make you know I paid for the camera you know right back in the early days so um yeah 
just keep going. You know, I've got over 150 videos already, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, well, in my mind, it's pretty amazing. So I will just keep adding this block. Then I'll go back and sew the next block in the row, which is block 10 for row 7, and that's a seahorse. Seahorse and a little bit of seaweed. And I've already got that laid out on the little cutting mat in the other room that I use to lay out my, my blocks. So I will take my needle and thread and what have you back into the other room. So far 13,500 hexagons, paper hexagons have been removed. There's probably at least probably 20 still scattered throughout the quilt. And it is quite a, quite a um, bulky thing. I mean this is, this is a big quilt by anybody's standards. You know, 2.54 meters square. Yep. I can't even hang it off off a curtain rod if I wanted to because my 10,000 hexagon quilt that I've hung up in the bedroom off the curtain rod is only two inches off the floor. This is would have to be hung up from something right at ceiling height. And in a rented place, I can't go putting hooks up at ceiling height or hooks in the ceiling. So I'm not sure what this is going to happen what it's going to use it could be it goes on the bed yeah it could be it gets put in a tub and left there for years but we'll we'll see but it is big it is huge I am very pleased with it because it's just something that I started on a whim let's see if I can do an underwater quilt and now it's coming down to the final stage it's the final row of blocks and I couldn't be happier but I will leave it there. I will catch you next time. Once again, thank you very much. And I said no video next week. It'll be the week after. So that'll be the it'll be the first Sunday in May anyhow. So that'll be, what, the 7th or something. So I will catch you then. And thank you very much.